Rudy said to us, NHI is here and he can't wait to talk to us. And Gary, you have said, again, I'm paraphrasing the both of you, uh, that they are communicating through us, through particular others who are able to communicate out what, uh, what they're trying to say. Um, can we elaborate a little bit on that? Maybe we'll start, we'll start with you, Gary. Um, so again, I'm going to correct something because otherwise yeah. I'll end up on the front page of the guardian tomorrow. <laughs> Please. Or, or I don't want to be in the papers. Daily Mirror or whatever in the UK. Um, so I, I never said that they are communicating through certain people, but I said that the evidence, which is not proof or nor a conclusion, mm. the evidence suggests that there are certain kinds of people with certain kinds of abilities that they are in some way lighthouses in the dark to these things that they, from whatever vantage they sit, this is all speculation. They see these people, or perhaps it's a different way. It, a different turn is that because certain people recognize what they see for what it is, that moment of interaction is sort of like a quantum connection, right? That basically causes these things to be entangled. And you know, I I, I call it it's an intelligence test or it's a mirror test. You know, the mirror test in the jungle is can an animal walk by a mirror and not see it just as an enemy, but actually eventually recognize it as itself. And so is this a mirror test for us that we're actually recognizing ourselves or a form of ourselves mm -hmm. or something that we might eventually become in the, in the future? So um, you know, that's how I think about it. Rudy, in one of the discussions we had, maybe in a couple of discussions we had, uh, you, you were fascinated by trying to understand why uh, many people who are exposed to these type of experiences, uh, type of uh, experiences uh, engaged with NHI, are become, in your words, horse whisperers or more creative uh, or more uh, uh, seemingly psychic. D yes. Do you want to expand um, on that? And in fact, this seems to be the general conclusion of the vast survey that I did with Ray Hernandez and Nancy Rodwell and John Climo, where uh, real professionals asked uh, over 4,000 people in a survey that takes approximately six to eight hours to complete. But many people have done this, 4,000 plus have done this because they want the story to come out and they can see that these are statistically the right questions to be asking to get to the bottom of this whole thing about people who seem to have a special gift or special gifts that they see uh, craft more easily, that they um, have near-death experiences or have uh, a sensitivity to past lives of humans who've lived previously, or that they um, become horse whisperers, as you said, or bird whisperers, animal whisperers, or are very intuitive to other human beings so that they can kind of read your mind. Scary thought. <laughs> but um, um, this all happens to people because they evidently have a wired brain or rewired brain or expanded brain wiring. And um, I'm convinced from having uh, followed this subject, um, uh, but I don't know of any way to prove it. I'm convinced that when you see the light emitted by a UFO, you're seeing a special kind of, relate, uh, uh, of radiation that many other people do not see. Now, this gets technical very quickly, but trying to avoid all that, um, we see ordinary light. When I watch this television screen at this moment, I'm seeing what is called Propagating dipole radiation, an electromagnetic field oscillation, dipole in character, easily described in four dimensions, three dimensions of space and time, and summarized in the Maxwell's equations, which include then the constant speed of light, a la Einstein. The um, exposure to the kind of radiation that a UFO makes 
uh, is very, very different. It's called quadrupole radiation. And in the university system, whether it's Stanford or Harvard, um, it's taught typically to senior level engineering and science students, physical science students. And um, the professor goes through the derivation of Maxwell's equations and expresses that, yes, as a solution of these equations is the perfect and complete description of light emission by dipole radiation. And when your professor has uh, demonstrated this and uh, convinced you of it, then he says very cursorily, and there is more solutions to the Einstein equations, and uh, these describe di uh, quadrupole radiation, but it falls very rapidly off in intensity with distance. That is to say, you can only see it if you're close to the emitting body. This is what other people who have seen flying saucers have described. For example, Susie Hansen has described that after the appearance of a UFO, after this departure, the valley was still alive with the kind of radiation for a moment. She points out how she could see the veins in the, in the leaves of the maple trees that they had. And um, um, uh, it was something that other people didn't seem to see. And I have seen examples of this too, where a young child uh, was uh, at, a, at a casual setting. I was present and other people who have been uh, in the company of UFO uh, 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 activity. And uh, this girl could say, there's one up there right now. And she says, it's slowly moving that way. And about half of the people present could see it. And the others, including me, could not see it. And then she followed for a moment and said, oh, now it's over there. How did it get there? Uh, and uh, I see it, she said. And again, half the people could see it. I could not. Well, that's because the brains of some of these individuals have been rewired to see more than dipole radiation. And when your brain is rewired by light stimulation, that rewiring continues with it for life. And so <laughs> other effects, which are quantum in character and of a stranger kind of mathematics than simple uh, XYZ space, those people have their expanded brain that can also tune uh, in other serious ways to the intellectual or the thought processes is going on in the universe. And that's what makes brain whisperers, that makes some people very sensitive to uh, what happened in a past life. Um, has, it's the source of all of the tricks that we discuss as a classified phenomena in the Ray Hernandez volumes. And uh, I'm convinced that that is the missing secret, that there is another form of radiation that our space um, allows to exist. And so it's interesting because, you know, a lot of the things that I've talked about around the perception and the caudate patamen uh, work that I've done, which is the center of where intuition occurs, has been about what is the sensory system that is receiving this novel information uh, that's going from one place to another that's not obviously, obviously electromagnetic. So there's not like an eye or a receiver, but I think as you're saying, there's a, an organizational capacity in the brain. And so when I think, I at least think, when somebody is born with it, it's genetic. And we do see some of these abilities that seem to follow in families. Uh, and certainly the caudate putamen uh, density that we've seen, uh, we would see a mother and a father have it and the children have it. Um, even though it's like one in 100 or one or 200 uh, people have it and we find these multiple pairings. So these people seem to be attracted to each other. 
But if there's a genetics behind it, and I'm actually involved in a project to seek out such individuals and get their DNA, there might be a way to uh, basically trace down the genes uh, that are necessary for this, or at least correlated with the ability. Um, and so th to me, that's trying to move towards a proof of the fact that then we could back engineer into the math that you talk about. Uh, very good, Gary. And um, I like what you say. Um, and I think that we are in fundamental agreement that there is something that is in some way involved in either the brain or perhaps the chromosomes. And remember that uh, Stuart Hameroff and um, uh, uh, Roger Petrolos have been um, um, likewise tracing uh, this, uh, this special gift um, back to um, the uh, chromospheric activity. And they talk about the, uh, the spiraling waves emitted by the brain, uh, which also um, you know, carry information in them in ways that we don't really yet understand. So yeah, it's interesting that a lot of um, mainstream neurophysiologists now admit that uh, brain waves that we see and this s synchronized brainwave activity is not just a clock that keeps the thing running like a computer program or a computer chip, but actually is an information transfer system. That information is transferred from one hemisphere to another or from one region to another through these modulations. So it stands to reason that if those modulations, if you, if I were standing next to you head to head, my modulations might affect yours. Um, or if there's other modulations occurring in these other mathematical realms uh, of which you speak, maybe those might not propagate as light locally, but they might be, you know, much able to transmit much further and much more interestingly. So I, I think the resonance and these frequency modulations that are happening in the brain are part of the answer behind all of this. I myself have uh, heard about and noticed that um, uh, people who have flying saucer involvement will often re re reply or tell me about how, uh, yeah, my mom uh, did it. And also one of mm -hmm. my brothers, they, they can do this also. They could stay right up with me. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so that connection uh, does pass on genetically, apparently. Um, it is possible that it also has some uh, cultural um, development uh, that's, uh, that gets accelerated in a, uh, a much reinforced environment of yeah. the family. So um, there's plenty of room for um, uh, for these many kinds of things to be happening and are not being able to really see the subtle patterns of this. Mm -hmm.